We, uh, we give those figures because we think they're important, both the uh, investments per share and the operating earnings per share, excluding the in earnings that come from the investments, and, uh, and leaving out insurance underwriting profits or losses because we think at worst they'll break even, but they do bounce around from year to year. Uh, those figures are pre-tax on the operating earnings, uh, so I'm not sure whether you're applying your discount factor to pre-tax or after-tax, but we think they're important. And I would expect, the, well, the operating earnings, you know, are almost certain uh, to increase. Uh, how much, you know, who knows, but that number is likely to go up. The investments are still about the same uh, as at year end, but that they could go up or down based on whether we're able to buy more operating businesses. Uh, our goal is our goal is to build both numbers to some extent, but our our primary goal is to build the operating earnings figures. We never we. If Charlie and I had to stick a number in an envelope right now in front of us as to what we thought the intrinsic value of Berkshire was, well, neither one of us would stick a figure. We'd stick a range because it, it, it would be uh, ridiculous to uh, come up with a, a single specific number, which encompasses not only the businesses we own, but what we're going to do with the capital in the future. But even our ranges uh, would differ modestly. At, uh, and they might might differ tomorrow in terms of how I would feel versus today, but not not dramatically at all. Uh, I would say this: uh, I think I certainly. Uh, well, you, you've received signals once or twice. When we said we would buy in our stock, we obviously thought that it was selling below the bottom of a conservative range of of um, intrinsic value, and we did that once some years ago, and by saying so, of course, the stock went up, and so we never got any stock bought. And so there's sort of a self-defeating factor about, uh, about taking the kind of uh, approach to it that we do in terms of really telling people that the only reason we'll buy in stock is because if we think it's cheap. That is not standard practice in corporate America at all. In fact, corporate America, to some extent, buys in their stock more aggressively when it's high than when it's low. But uh, uh, they may have a, some equation in their mind that escapes my reasoning power. But the, uh, uh, I would, we do not regard Berkshire as overpriced. And I would say that uh, we, we had very, fairly, very recently, we had a very, very large international company that uh, might well have been interested in doing something with Berkshire, and it, it, it's a very ni very nice company, but it's bigger than we can handle, unless we would use a lot of stock, and we won't use the stock. We would we we uh, we just think our shareholders would come out behind, be a wonderful company, and you know make a lot of headlines, but. In the end, our shareholders would be poor because our stock is a currency, and and unless it's fully valued, it's 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 uh, a big mistake to use it as a currency. Now we use some in the Burlington deal, but we used a whole lot more cash, and in effect, we only used 30% for stock, and it was worth doing, but it was painful. And if Lubrizol had wanted to do a deal involving stock, we would not have done it. I I, I told the. Uh, James Hambrick that right off the bat. So we had absolutely no interest in, 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 in buying Rubisol. We were perfectly willing to give, uh, you know, close to $9 billion in cash. And we, in my view, we, we were getting our money's worth. Uh, but we would not have given a significant portion of it in Berkshire stock because uh, we would be giving away part of the businesses that we already own and we like Burlington, and we like Seas Candy, and we, we, we like Escar, and to give away a portion of those, even to get another very good business, 
would not make financial sense for our shareholders. So uh, you can draw your own deductions about our calculations of intrinsic value from that statement. Charlie? Well, he's obviously looking at the two right factors. And I think that we have not permanently lost the ability to do some interesting things eventually with uh, our enormous wealth in cash and marketable securities. We won't always be as inactive as we are now. Well, we're not that inactive, Charlie. Well, we, <laughs> oh, I don't know. You practically crawl out of your skin sometimes. <laughs> uh, nine billion is, you know, we. If we say normal earning power is $12 billion, that, 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 that uses up a good portion of one year's quota. Mm. Although we'd like to use more. I mean, there's no yeah, question. Yeah, you're talking. <laughs> Can you see us using stock in the next few years? If the business were good enough, of course. Yeah. Our trouble is, it's a terrible trouble you people have, and the businesses you already own are so good, we, it's not wise to part with them to get a business we don't own. Ordinarily. <laughs>